Hi everyone, I'm meteorologist Kelly Cass here at the Weather Channel. We're live on Facebook right now. We welcome your comments, your concerns, your questions. Of course, Halloween weekend is right around the corner. Halloween exactly one week from today. So you're probably wondering how the weather is shaping up for the parties that you've got going on this weekend. Um, we're hearing from John right now. Hello to Tammy and Amy and Christine. Good morning to you all. I got my jacket on, by the way, because I'm so cold. I'm just getting over a head cold and our studio from the last show is really, really freezing. So I hope you don't mind. I had to put the jacket on. I just could not help myself. Had not turned the heat on in the house yet, uh, but that's coming pretty soon too, because even in the south, temperatures have cooled down significantly. We did have a front come on through. It even moved through the northeast where it was cold enough for some snow. All right, so who got the snow over the weekend? I know my friends up in the Adirondacks saw a little bit of snow. The other side of the country also looking active this morning. We've got some much needed rain coming into California. In fact, Los Angeles looking at some thunderstorm activity causing a ground stop at the airport. You don't hear about that too often, right? But it is nice to see the rain where we need it here in California. Uh, good morning to Antoine. Lisa, good morning from Florida. Uh, we've got Leah watching from Detroit where, oh, by the way, Detroit, we've got some rain in your forecast over the next couple of days. Are you still happy here in Chicago? Your Cubbies making it to the World Series. We'll have to see what happens with the Indians. Uh, the weather looks a bit interesting, by the way, for Game 2 of the World Series. Game 1, you're going to be fine, but Game 2, we'll start to see some of that rain moving over towards Cleveland, Ohio. Up to an inch of rain is possible around the Minneapolis area, the darker green indicating where we could see a couple of inches of rain right through the Corn Belt, southern Wisconsin, into northern Illinois as well. Uh, so the weather could get a little bit severe, as a matter of fact, across the plain states as we head through tomorrow night, Tuesday night, for anywhere from Nebraska down into parts of Oklahoma as well. The main threat is going to be damaging winds as well as some hail, a low tornado threat. Thankfully, the tornado threat looking pretty isolated at this moment. We've got Nicole watching from Texas. Hello to you. We've got Rich watching from Kansas. Um, someone's, Carmine said, she's using that S word, such a bad word. Yeah, I talked about snow. And yes, we are tracking some of that snow, mainly in the higher elevations. Um, but you know what? I heard that um, white faces, are not white face, Killington is actually opening for the season to see season pass holders tomorrow and then to everyone else on Wednesday. So I know a lot of skiers and snowboarders are very excited to see snow in the forecast. Here's a look. We've got Alan, my weather producer in the background, moving the radar around for me to show you where all the active weather is right now. Northern California, where you see the oranges on our radar, that's some pretty heavy rain coming down right now. So Eureka, uh, Crescent City perhaps getting some of that wet weather. There it is right along the coastline. San Francisco looking at three hour delays today because of the weather. So we're talking wind as well as the clouds, you know, the low ceilings causing us some problems there. Uh, so yeah, we do have the wet weather even around Los Angeles. Look at that. A little bit of wet weather around LAX. We've had some thunder activity as well in Orange County. We're zooming on into Riverside, San Bernardino, looking at some pockets of heavier rain. Again, this is much needed rain, you guys. We have had a drought for not just months, but years across California. So we're very happy to see it. It's just kind of a problem when you're trying to travel in it, right? It gets a little messy out there. Uh, let's see, we've got someone watching from Elko, Nevada, Alan. That's over in this area. Do we have any wet weather over in Elko for this person watching us on Facebook? There's Elko right there. Hello to you. We've got a few scattered showers just to the west of Elko, right along Interstate 80. You'll be encountering that, so nothing terribly heavy, uh, but just be prepared to use the windshield wipers at times. All right, we've got someone watching. Oh, Colleen is watching from Buffalo, New York. Hey, Colleen. What do you say we switch it on over to the East Coast? Because you know what's something very interesting is happening. Not quite lake effect snow, but lake effect rain, because the winds are blowing blowing in this direction. It's colder aloft. You've got the warmer waters and therefore you've got the instability. The, the lake effect rain showers happening. Northern Michigan, uh, mainly south of you, Colleen and Buffalo, but certainly down towards Jamestown, New York, we could see some of that wet weather and you can see some pockets of heavier rain up here in northern Michigan. How many of you are looking forward to lake effect snow? Anybody? Well, you live in this part of the country, so maybe you're okay with it. Uh, you can see a little bit of rain across the upper peninsula of Michigan. And there's the blue. That is showing us the snow, some residual snow showers up there in the northern parts of Maine. 
Mount Washington, by the way, had winds gusting around 118 miles per hour yesterday with the snow coming down, wind chills below zero. That's crazy weather, right, on top of Mount Washington, which is right in through here, northern parts of New Hampshire. We even had some snow in the Adirondacks mixed in with the fall foliage. So that's kind of cool, right? I know a lot of you are excited about uh, hopefully a good ski season ahead for the mountains there. All right, we've got David watching from Swanton, Vermont. Uh, let's see, Jill is watching from northern Indiana. She says it's cold there already. I know the days are getting shorter, too. Um, it's just that time of year. I see a lot of the Christmas decorations are already out in the stores. I heard my first Christmas jingle on a commercial. I think it was Hershey's Kisses. They're playing Christmas music already. Um, kind of crazy, but yeah, Halloween is exactly one week from today. Um, and right now, the overall pattern, you guys, I know a lot of you are wondering for this weekend especially, um, it looks like it's going to be pretty warm and dry for a good chunk of the country. And maybe that's good news. You don't want to have to put a coat on over the costume, right? Um, so that's basically kind of a long-range forecast. But for now, you are putting the coats on. Minneapolis 44, Green Bay 46, Chicago 50. Uh, but basically south of the Great Lakes, that's where temperatures are going to be able to warm up 10 to 20 degrees above average in some cases across the central and southern plains. Uh, let's see. Uh, Julian wants snow <laughs> so my wife can pull my sled. Uh, let's see. We got Maureen saying it's beautiful in the town of Surf City. I believe that's probably North Carolina she's talking about there. Pleasant here in Florida as well. Yeah, if you want the warmth, you head down to Florida. But even Florida, you guys got chilly over the weekend. We saw a record low in Gainesville. It got down to 41 degrees yesterday morning. There's a look at where we are right now. Any of you watching from Florida? Got the nice warm temperatures at 79 degrees in Miami, 76 in New Orleans, Atlanta. Cool start to the day, but we're 68 degrees already. And we're going back into the 70s, even low 80s by the time we get through the rest of this week. So I know we need the rainfall. Um, Debbie just said Georgia hasn't seen rain since Matthew, and that's a very good point, Debbie. And that was even especially southern and eastern Georgia. Northern Atlanta, Georgia didn't really get much at all. So our deficit continues to grow in Atlanta. And you can see the temperatures are going to be really warm this week. Our average high is 71, but yet we're looking at 70s and 80s pretty much for this upcoming week. So it really is going to stay on the warm side. If you like it warm, that's great, but we do need a, the rainfall. Uh, Debbie's watching us from North Louisiana. Uh, we've got Dan watching from Palm Beach. That's awesome. I guess the weather's awesome where you are. Good for you. Here's that storm threat I was talking about. Remember I said there could be some severe weather tomorrow, tomorrow night. Isolated tornadoes can't be ruled out, but the main threat with this is going to be damaging wind gusts and also some hail mixed in with the rain. So here's the front moving toward the east as we go through the middle of the week. You've got just enough moisture, just enough instability. I wish we could say we had more moisture here because the drought is just getting terribly ridiculous here. Chattanooga, Atlanta, the Piedmont of Western North Carolina. Uh, we're just not really looking at a whole lot of moisture. It's not looking all that promising for that rain to hold together. But it will hold together. Places like Fargo, Minneapolis tomorrow looking pretty wet. Um, be careful, you know, this time of the year, the leaves are coming down, create some very slippery conditions out there on the roadways, including I-35 being impacted. Over towards Chicago, by the time we get towards Wednesday, game two of the World Series right here in Cleveland. Yeah, we got a little bit of green showing up on the map. There could be some wet weather moving in for that game. And then, of course, uh, Thursday, I believe, is a travel day. They're heading back to Chicago. Chicago will be behind the front by that point. But you see the system does move into the northeast, and that will spread rain along the 95 corridor, as well as some wintry uh, uh, precipitation across the higher elevations heading Thursday into Friday. It is going to be just cold enough. Enough. We see the lovely pink and blue on the map, which does indicate some of that frozen variety. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of a raw day between Albany, Schenectady, back towards Buffalo with the rain and the temperatures only in the 40s. Uh, Jill is hoping that rain is coming uh, to Maine on Friday. Yes, we do have a little bit of rain northeast suffering from a drought, too. All right, I talked about the World Series, so let's check it out specifically for Cleveland. Game one is tomorrow, first pitch at 8.08. This is so exciting. Of course, the Cubs have not been in it since 1945. It's been a while for the Indians as well. So I'm happy for both of you guys. No matter who you're rooting for, it's just an awesome World Series. I hear the tickets are really expensive, too, like in the thousands. Um, so, unfortunately, the weather looks a little iffy for game two. Game one's going to be fine, but game two on Wednesday, there is going to be that chance of rain. It's going to be kind of raw out there as well. But I'm sure all 
the fans huddled together, keeping it warm, keeping it exciting out there um, at Progressive Field. So, and again, as they travel back towards Chicago, the weather looks a little iffy toward the end of the week as well. Um, Michael's watching from Oregon. Mary says, go Cubbies. <laughs> I think a lot of people, it's, it's kind of weird, you know, I'm not really sure who to root for. Neither of my teams are in it, but I'm just so excited for both of these teams. Uh, let's see, we have anybody watching from the West because we've got some Monday night football going on in Denver tonight. And the story here in the West, the above average temperatures. It's going to be a warm one in Denver. We're above average. High pressure delivering us the sunny conditions for the most part. You can see some clouds back toward the West Coast. But if you are heading out to Sports Authority Field at Mile High, your Broncos are taking on the Houston Texans. Both teams evenly matched. We're 4-2. and two, And it looks like the weather is going to be just fine for kickoff at 6.30 Mountain Time. We'll see those temperatures into the 60s and dropping back into the 50s by the time you make your way home from the game. Uh, so that's pretty much the, all the weather stories. I think we covered it all here on this uh, Monday edition of Facebook Live. We hope you guys all have a great day today. And, of course, stay with the Weather Channel for the latest updates and theweather.com as well.